Okay, everybody, um, I'm going to do a tutorial on App Inventor. And App Inventor is a very simplified program that you can use on a web. It's web based. And in this particular program, uh, it allows you to create a mobile app for an Android device. And so, what I want to do is walk you through the steps of creating your first uh, mobile app if you've never done this before. So, you want to go to appinventor.mit.edu. And it's going to take you to this site here. Okay, so it is for working on Android devices. So you're going to need to have an Android device. Now, fortunately, in my classroom, I've got five Android devices that we can connect to, and they have a USB cable. However, if you happen to have your own Android device, then um, you can also uh, create your app and install it on your own device. Now, because we're on a firewall in our school district, we are unable to use the main method of attaching it and that is by connecting through a Gmail account. However, you are going to need a Gmail account to create, I believe. Now you can try creating an account using a different one other than um, Google. And I'm not entirely sure if we can do that or not. Okay, so let me just show you what you want to do is you want to click on here and uh, you want to create a new project, but here's an example of a test project that we're going to do. It's one where it has a little label here and input, you can put your name, and if you click the button that says uh, get a greeting, it's actually going to greet you by name. Okay, so I'm going to walk you through some of the, the, the project items that you have here. So what you can do is, um, if now in the case of my classroom, what we're going to do is uh, I'm going to let students work, you, actually I want you to work in teams of two. So two of you are going to choose what your design is, what it's going to look like, how, is it, how it's going to behave, and then you're going to take turns working on it. So what I would like you to do is have one person be the pilot and one person be the co-pilot. And if you're the pilot, you are going to be the one who works the keyboard, the mouse, and you're going to be doing the coding. And the other person will be guiding you through and talking about it. Then after about 15 minutes, I do want you to switch. So you're going to take turns. We call that pair programming. So let's go ahead and start a new project. And as we're talking about it, um, so I want to do start a new project. Okay, so I need to have a new uh, name for this app. Um, and so we're going to call this uh, greeting. Greet me. And so we'll just call it that um, and give it an OK. And then it should open up a new project. Now, we're in designer mode. And when you have a mobile app, you have a user interface. Um, and that would be the screen, the phone that you're doing. Um, and you're going to interact with the phone in different ways. But this is called the user interface. Some people call that user experience. What kind of experience is the user going to have when they're interacting with their app? Um, and so this is actually, we call that designer mode when you're an app inventor. And so if you look here, you can see uh, you have a palette of options, objects, and um, different kinds of functionalities for your phone. You have a viewer. This is what your screen is going to look like. And then as you start adding items to your project, they're going to be added to the list of components. Okay, so um, one of the things we see here is our screen is pretty generic, pretty bland. Um, and so we have, this is our screen here. It's screen one. We can do an about the screen. Um, if you scroll down, we have a lot of different settings. We can change it, uh, background image. We can give it a background image. Um, we can give it an animation when we close the screen, etc. Uh, we can change the background color. So let's just try a light gray, for example. And uh, where it says title, here it just says screen one. So what we're going to want to do is give it a new, new, new name. Uh, let's call it Greet Me. Okay. So we give it a name, and then notice when I clicked off of that, it changed it right up here. So now it says greet me here. Um, so one of the things you need to understand about a, a mobile app is you got to figure out what your app is capable of doing. And then once you do that, you grab your items that you're going to work with. Um, it's just like your palette of items to put onto your canvas. It's kind of like painting. And so a couple of things you should be aware of. Uh, I want to go over a couple of these. Layout. Uh, for whatever reason, if, if you don't use a layout and you just start dragging and dropping things, you can only put one thing above another. So one, so you can arrange them from top to bottom, but you can't go left or right and you can't get a little fancy with it. For that, you're going to need a layout. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to do both a vertical arrangement, drop it in here, 
And then I'm going to drag a horizontal arrangement and drop it right inside. You see where that little highlights is blue? You want to see that it's inside. And if for some reason it's not inside, um, that you will see on the components. And you might need to rearrange it on the screen until you see it. So this, you can see inside of our screen one, we have a vertical arrangement. Inside a vert vertical arrangement, we have a horizontal arrangement. And we're going to do that because what I want to do is have both a button, so I drop it in here, but I also want a label for it. So I drag the label. I'm trying to drop it in there, and I let go. Notice the, the label's on the left, the button's on the right. And then, um, so then, oh wait, we don't want the button here. We want the button underneath. What we want is we need a text box for the user to input. There we go. So now we're going to have a label. So sorry, it's going to be for the text box. One of the things you should do in good design, and we've done this with other uh, programming techniques in the class, is that is to give things meaningful names and meaningful prompts. So the first thing, label one, if we have a lot of labels, that's going to get confusing when it comes time to code our blocks. So we're going to give it a more meaningful name. So the first thing we want to do is rename it. So we click on rename and we're going to call this. Now one of the things I like to do is put what it is. So I'm going to put name label. And you could do a shorthand, LBL for shorthand. I'm just going to write it out. Name label. And then we're going to do the same thing for the text box. We're going to rename it to name text box. And sure, it's a longer variable name, but it's a very meaningful one. We know, first of all, what it's referencing. It's referencing the name, and we know one's a label, one's a text box. And then our button. So we're going to call this greeting button. So we're going to rename that to greeting button. And of course, I don't need to retype button, so I'll just write like so. Okay, so now we have some components here, but the question is, what are we going to do? I told you what we want it to do is to greet us. So the first thing I want to do is um, I should, well, first of all, I should change our text, right? Um, so I go to the name label, and I want to go where it says name, and then I'll put uh, enter your name. Click. And there we go. See how now it fills it out there. And then we want to click on the button, and we're going to change the text on the button. And it's uh, greet me. Okay. Nice. You know, it's a command. It's what it's going to do. So when we click it, it's going to actually get a greeting. And so the last thing I want to do is talk about some of the other user interfaces. I'm going to let you kind of decide how these things work. Okay. You've got a clock. You've got images. Um, text box slides. These are all kinds of ways that the user can interact. All these are going to be something visible that we can see um, on our screen. Sometimes it won't be something like a notifier. You may not see it until after something else happens. Um, and so some of these you may not see right away. We already covered layout. Let's talk about media. So one of the things that we're going to do is, you can see we can, we can put camcorders in there, camera, player, etc. We're going to use what's called text-to-speech. And what that's going to do is that we're going to write the text, and it's actually going to speak it out loud. So this, this gets to be a lot of fun. Now, text-to-speech, um, notice it's called text-to-speech 1. So if we're going to keep on what we're doing here, we could do this greeting text-to-speech. I can get rid of the number 1. Click OK. And you'll notice it's non-visible. That's because text-to-speech is not something we actually interact with directly. It's gonna, we're going to do that through the button here. And so since there's nothing for the user to look at, um, it's internal to the phone, it becomes a non-visible component. And so that's going to allow us uh, to get our greeting. So at this point, we've kind of got the start of an app. And there's a lot of blank space here. It's kind of ugly. We'd probably want to spice it up with a picture and some other things. Um, I'll let you kind of discover what those are. The other thing you might want to be aware of is under sensors, we have the accelerometer sensor, and that's really cool. That allows you to shake the phone. Orientation sensor, I believe, anytime you have a question, of course, you can look here. This tells us if we're rolling it, so if we're actually changing it in different types of direction. Um, and so you can have a barcode scanner, location sensor. So there's a lot of things that we can use on here. And um, so this lets us know if we're shaking it and then the different movements that we might do. So, and then there's social ones. So if we want to do texting, we want to get make phone calls and Twitter even. Um, we can store information. We can even create a Bluetooth server. We can connect to the web. And then if you have the Lego Mindstorms, you can even start commanding it with your phone. 
Okay, so at this point, we've got our user interface here, and now what we need to do is code it. So for that, we've got to go to blocks.